Hello everybody and welcome. In this video we will be looking at how to make a interlocking gatefold card. So it's a gatefold card and instead of using a belly band to keep it closed it's got a little interlocking uh, bit on the front to keep it closed as I've already just said. It adds interest to the card and some fun. So I should introduce myself. My name is Tatiana. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in Australia and I love to paper craft. I started off with scrapbooking and then have gone into the world of card making. What I love about card making is that you can make a card and really brighten someone's day by sending it to them. Um, and they're much easier and quicker projects than a whole scrapbook. Though, don't get me wrong, I still love my scrapbooking, as you should know, because I've been doing the Scrapbook Saturday videos. Anyhow, let's head to the craft, de craft desk, annunciation, <laughs> and get started. Okay, <laughs> I have my designer series paper, and I have my A4 paper. I've chosen Highland Heather, and we're going to cut this in half which is at 14.8 or no yes 14.8 or if you are in North America that is at five and a half inches and then we're going to do two score lines one at five and five one two and a half five centimeters and 5.25 and then 5.25 on the other end one two and a half and I will get up and in inches you would be doing two and one eighth from both sides that is absolutely correct and then for your designer series paper you will need a full piece of that's 10 centimeters wide or four inches wide and then you're going to trim that down to have a height of 14.3 or five and a quarter inch with the letter and then you're going to cut this card bit in half. So it's 10 centimeters wide. So you're cutting that in half at five centimeters. Or when you're using the letter paper, you're going to cut that in half so that you've got two two inch strips. And then you also need a piece of whisper white for the insert for inside your card. And that is at 10 centimeters by 14.3 or four inches by five and a quarter inch when you're using letter cardstock. I got there. Now, let's put that down, burnish these folds. So fold and fold, and that folds up into the middle beautifully. I'm going to take and burnish one side at a time. So by burnishing the folds with your bone folder, you're making sure it's gonna sit nice and straight and also that it's gonna sit flat. Just look at the difference. Can you see that? Look at the difference when that card, this side has been burnished and this side has not been. And that makes it pop up that little bit. And we want it to sit. And so the second side that I'm burnishing, I'm making sure that the two join together in the middle here. And that creates a regular gatefold card. Just gonna flip that over and do the same on the other side. And we're going to adhere our card pieces of a designer series paper straight onto those card flaps and they also meet up in the middle so it looks like it's possibly one solid piece but it's being cut in half so I'm going to 
glue that down so that we don't forget how they join together because it looks smoother on the eye when you join them in a way that they actually should join together. So I've opened that up to get to the edge and I'm making sure the other three sides have similar distance from the edges and that's why I like to use the multi-purpose glue because this glue uh, before it sets or adheres completely it gives me that little bit of wiggle room so I can place this down and move it around and make sure it's exactly where I would like it and there we have that gate fold and then the insert would sit right in here but I'm not going to glue that down quite yet because we may want to decorate it and so I don't want to have it stuck down now let's create the interlocking mechanism I'm just still not sure which shapes I want to use the most obvious is circles and let's do that let's do the circles layering circles there we go I've got my layering circle dies and what I'm going to do before deciding which ones to use what I've got here is I've got a container of all the circle dies both the scalloped and the regular and I'm going to choose which sizes I want to combine so you want to have two circles or two shapes that layer inside each other and you want to have some sort of I feel like that's too yeah, you want to be able to produce a good ring or outline on the round the outside edge just so that there's bits to adhere and to interlock into if it's too thin so if I was to choose that one that would be too thin if I pick this circle that could work but I just want to give myself that little bit of extra room so therefore I'm going to pick this circle so this is the combination I'm going to use and that's why I've got these little pre-cut bits so I can play and see which combinations I'd like and then I find the right die piece so there is the one for the scallop and then oh, too big there's the one for the circle Root, root. And ooh. What? Those two. Okay. Now before I'm going to do anything with these two, I'm gonna layer them so that they're cutting side down. And make that even. And then use a little bit of washi tape to hold pieces in place together this means that I can get that ring for the outside without having to do two die cutting two die cutting to die cut twice and let's go with the purple paper as well for this Ooh. picking it up so that it's not stuck to my table Ooh. Should have done that on the cardstock. Let's try again. Oh no, nope, it's barely stuck. Yay! And I want it onto the circle, onto the cardstock. Oh my goodness, I can't speak. And bring in Bailey, my stamp and cut and boss machine. so quiet tonight please feel free to let me know you're watching and if 
you have a fun doll that you've seen and you don't know how to make, let me know because I'll be happy to demonstrate. Because this is my regular. I do these videos weekly, every Monday night here in Australia. I am starting a bit later tonight. Actually, I'm going to have to start them later. I'm going to have to do 8.30 for the next few weeks because my son has got after school sports on a Monday now and it means it's quite rushed. You're concentrating. Oh, well, that's good to hear, Tanya. <laughs> Lou, what are you celebrating? <laughs> okay, so I've got that and I don't actually need that circle. Because I'd like it in another colour. Put that to the side. And I'll need this circle bit. And I want to cut that from the DSP. New. Let's cut it from white or Barmy Blue. Barmy Blue. Let's go with Barmy Blue. And there goes the rest of my... Oh, you're celebrating that you're watching me. That's so sweet. Where did I put that? So, oh, there. Run that through. And because I've used the same die, that one sits perfectly inside that. Should use snowflakes tonight. I was thinking of using. Oh, you're relaxing and watching. That's lovely. Actually, let's do. Let's make this a snowflake card because it just seems so flaky colored, and because I have some beautiful snowflakes pre-cut and stamped. Snowflake sits beautifully in that circle, so I really like that. I'm going to start with that. So now let's adhere our interlocking. So the trick is the outside circle, the one with the hole, only glue one half. So we're going to glue the left half, left half, and then the inside circle, when you glue that, you're only going to glue the right half. And then they will open up as so. Enough chit chatter, let's add the adhesive. I am eyeballing that as a half. And you can start with either circle first, but I'm starting with the outside one because it's the bigger one and placement. And so I'm placing mine more towards the bottom but you can place yours up towards the top or in the middle it doesn't really matter and then the other half will go in there and what you can do is really sneakily is you can add the glue to this bit because you know that that's the bit that you want to glue and place that in there and then you'll see that it oh, should set first. Let it glue, adhere, and set. Make sure it's not gluing bits that you don't want to glue together. There, so the glue there. Okay, so I did get a little bit of glue right here, which is going to. a bit but what you do is take a white eraser and you can get rid of that glue now you may still see the mark there but the tackiness the tackiness has gone away 
and there is the interlocking mechanism you see that so we don't just close one and then the other we actually interlock the two bits together isn't that fun now let's do some decorating I've got this snowflake and I've spritzed it with my shimmer paint spritz but do I want to use that one or do I want to use the balmy blue one? Let's see. Well, I like the balmy blue one better. Or shall we use a glittery balmy blue? Oh, too many choices. Or shall we layer the two? So many possibilities. Yep, I like that. Let's start with that right there. And I can't help myself. I love my shimmer. I'm really, there we go. Here's the frost white. So this is rubbing alcohol with some shimmer paint. I'm getting low. Stocks are getting low there. And what I'm going to do is spritz some of my pre-stamped snowflakes. And we'll also use the glimmer snowflakes. So I'm just finding a few of the balmy blue um, little ones as well as what is it? Highland Heather. So I stamped all of these snowflakes to coordinate with the designer series paper. That one's already shimmering. Let's find a few more balmy blues. Why is it you can never find the colour you want? did have these sorted by color and size and then then it didn't happen anymore Ooh, another balmy blue You've been just as quick to stamp Ooh, found one okay it's enough of those little ones let's get a few of the big ones What we're going to do is <laughs> Tanya has commented that I'm determined to make her buy this set well Tanya you should know me by now I like my snowflakes I'm just gonna pop these snowflakes onto this piece of grid paper and there's a tiny bit left of my shimmer concoction and there's plenty there so as you can see you don't need a lot and now my grid paper is super duper glimmery can you see that is that camera picking that up or the light when I tip it towards my light to the left there you should see the shimmerness of it and because it's based with alcohol um, alcohol rubbing alcohol it dries very quickly compared to water Just taking a glue dot on the back of this snowflake and when you position anything inside this circle make sure it's inside the circle because of the interlocking mechanism you don't want it to go over the edges and then I wanted to take the smaller this one is a die cut from the balmy blue glimmer paper which is in the August to December mini catalog. So we've got a layering of snowflakes there and we're going to add some more snowflakes to the front of the card. Now beware of where that line is. And think about the placement and how that interlocking mechanism happens. I'm not just not to say you can't put any overlapping. So we're going to put that one there. And we'll use a glue dot again. Place that glue dot in the middle. And we'll have that 
in there and you'll see that it doesn't matter that that went over the edge because of the way it interlocks. So, but just be mindful of it all. And let's see, let's place our, and so over here, I can place snowflakes onto this edge and not worry about that because we know that this side of the circle is glued down, but it can't go over the gap or over the two circles. So I'm just going to do some placing first. And if you wanted to, you could place a, so, uh, a snowflake to go off the edge there. And um, I'll trim that one, but what shall we layer? Yes, let's create a big snowflake there. Woohoo! Shimmery snowflake goodness. Now, I know that the shimmer isn't showing up for you right now, but trust me, it's there and it is pretty. You don't have to use glue dots. I am using them simply for convenience. And because I like that they keep the edges up, I like the textural feel and look of my snowflakes coming off, coming up at the edges. Now this one, I need to be strategic as to where I place that glue dot. Can you see that happening? more layer no what we will do is we will add some snowflakes on the inside as well now where's that card we will add our card insert I've decided that I'm not going to stamp this one tonight I am going to add some snowflakes on top that centering it in the middle of that bit and what we're going to do is place that snowflake there so I'm going to adhere it on both sides so I'm going to add glue dot to opposite I've added two glue dots in opposite bits of the snowflake and Then when we close the card, let's give it a little bit of a press. And these are still drying, a little bit drying from the alcohol rub. So that means that it's going to be a lot easier to fold in. So if we close that again, this is what I do when I create. I constantly look at the finished product and see how is it working, how is it not working, and then see what I can add, see what I can take away. I really like the idea of that sparkly one right there. But with this one, the areas are smaller. So I'm just going to add some glue. Oh, Tanya, I can bring this set with me next month. Hey, how about that? Just making sure it's getting into that fold there. Got that snowflake there. I'm going to bring some little ones in. You love this set you use it to make your Christmas cards it is a beautiful set I should probably show people and I need a sentiment as well 
So this is the stamp set that these snowflakes have come from. It's the Snowflake Wishes stamp set. And it is in the holiday catalogue. Let me just see. I love this sentiment. Thank you, Snow March. That might be going perfect. Oh no, let's go sentiment free on this card. Ooh la la. And we will not and, but where'd they go? We will add some snowflakes. The drawer will be heaped it back and all have disappeared. Oh I know, I use them on Saturday. And they'll with my scrap. These are adhesive back snowflakes. You get two sheets with all these snowflakes. These are barmy. No, these are actually just jade in color, but they still go nicely. And these ones are iridescent. And all you have to do is peel them off. Oh, that one got stuck down. Yep. Oh no, it's got. And they are very delicate. It is easier if you use your take your pick tool. I'm going to use these just jady ones. All around because they're not in your face kind of bright. But you still see them. Add. over card front I'm talking to myself slightly thinking four five six seven eight one more I can go right there and then one on the inside There we go. And that is the interlocking stamp card. So it's a bit of a step up from the regular gift card. And we've decorated the inside and the outside, but what we haven't decorated is the envelope. Let me grab an envelope. And I haven't actually stamped a single thing tonight. Have you noticed that? Did anyone notice that? Seems a bit wrong. Thank you, Elizabeth. So we should stamp a snowflake on our envelope. <laughs> Thank you, Tanya. Grab a book. I'm going to use Barmy Blue. over the envelope flap so I've got it going on the edge of that envelope flap just for something different and there I can say I stamped tonight <laughs> so there you have it my lovelies the interlocking gate card and I will catch you. So let me know if there's any fun folds that you've seen around that you would like to know how they work. And I can certainly put them on the list to demonstrate on in Fantastic on during Fantastic Fun Folds Night on a Monday night. So for the next couple of weeks, it's going to be at 8.30 Australian Standard Daylight Time or Australian Eastern Daylight Time. I think that's whatever the correct error is. Uh, wording of that is um but normally it is at eight o'clock anyhow enough of me chit chatting i hope you have a lovely week and i do have another live video on wednesday thank you so much for joining me and bye for now